today's video, things are not going to be as positive. I want to shed a lot of light on the reality of uh, professional hockey, the whole hockey world in general, and what I have learned in the last six months. Because in the last six to eight months, I have been cut by four teams. I'll get to all those in a sec. So started with VIU last season, told the team at the end of the season, although they didn't get cut, told them, hey, I don't want to play here. I have an offer to try with the University of Manitoba Bison at U-Sport. I think if I go all in, I put my mind to something, I'm going to accomplish it. I'm going to bet on myself. I'm going to accomplish that goal. So although I didn't get cut from VIU, I told them I wasn't coming back. Number two, I thought it was a great idea to go to an SPHL free agent camp, that being in Birmingham, Alabama with the Birmingham Bulls. And although I didn't get the result I wanted, I thought I deserved a little bit of a better result. July, August, September, I guess. Trying out for the U of M Bisons. Uh, I thought things went really well. I thought everything I executed 100% perfectly from the on-ice training, off-ice training, my diet, my nutrition, the sports psychology, the way my mind works, the way that we rewired my brain the entire off-season. I thought everything could not have gone any better. Had a meeting with the coaches, I think three, two or three days before I got gassed. Hey, everything's going great. Love the work ethic, love this, love that. Don't change a thing. Figure, hey, things are going great. Well, guess what, three days later you get gassed. So that's just the reality of hockey, right? Things aren't always fair. Then came the Columbus River Dragons, which I'm not gonna dive too much into it because I wanna keep the videos positive, no slander, because I don't wanna get sued. But Columbus wasn't what was promised. Uh, there were some things going on that I didn't like. We had a guy drop down from NCAA D1 and from the SP. So obviously me compared to a guy who played D1 for how many years and from the SP, I'm not gonna stick. There's no way, no way around it. And that is where we are today. Nowhere to play beginning of November. In a lot of the videos, talk a lot of positivity, talk a lot about advice for, hey, things aren't going well, things are going great, we're slumping a little bit, this is how we kind of fix things. I like making these videos because I want to help people. I genuinely love helping people, giving people the tools and, and basically my lessons that I've learned through firsthand experience for how to be successful in hockey because growing up, I never had any first-hand experience from anybody else to, to go off of to say, hey, this is the way things work, this is the way things should be and this is how you're gonna be successful. Since I was a kid, my dream was always to play in the NHL. From when I was 10 years old, having an outdoor rink in my backyard, I'd pretend to be like Jose Theodore. That was me as a fan. I started to understand what goes on in the hockey world and how difficult it really is to make certain levels. Now, I'm sitting here today, I'll tell you, should I be playing college hockey? Yes, this season I should definitely be playing college hockey. Maybe not youth sport, but for sure I should have been able to latch on somewhere. Did that happen? No. One of my side gigs that I do, and I've been doing this for about three years now, is I work at MTS Center, I do a lot of conversions, I kind of help convert from ice to concert stuff to all that kind of stuff. Since I've gotten back from Columbus in Georgia, every time I step foot in that building, it just, it lights this fire under my ass that says like, Man, I, I have to make the most of this. Like, I can't give up on the dream, I can't give up on the goal, and if I get the next opportunity, which I'm very optimistic will happen, I'm going to make the most of that and I'm going to be driven to hopefully make my greatest comeback yet. I know it's going to come, it's just a matter of time, and it's gotta be patient. The reality of the situation is there are so many good goalies out there, from federal all the way down to the show, college, everywhere. Like, there are goalies in the American Hockey League right now that can, without a doubt, play in the show, but there's not enough opportunity for them to get into that spot. There's not an injury, there's not a guy going down or in the bed. There's guys in the coast, without a doubt, that can play in the American League, and probably some can play in the show. It's hard to make it as a goaltender. My dream's always been to play in the NHL, it's never going to happen, I'll say this right now. It is so far out of reach, it's not even funny. Although my goal is to get back into pro hockey, I guess hopefully for the second semester or second half of this season, and to get back into college hockey for the next couple of years and finish developing my game and, well, finish my education because God, I need something to fall back on aside from making these YouTube videos on a full-time basis. But I'm gonna conclude the video here. I have a beer league game later tonight. I wanna transition off to the highlights from that game. We're gonna do a Q&A, we're gonna do some cinematics, the ad, we'll call it a video. Thank you for watching today's video and we'll be back again in two days or three days depending on what day of the week this video ends up on. So I will see you then.
Alex Cross, if you stop the three on all rush but knocked it into your net when trying to cover it, will you just give up playing goalie or give up hockey entirely? Definitely not something I did last night. Every puck is stoppable. It can be a dump in from center. It can be a five on oh. There is a way to stop it. You need to figure it out and be patient on your edges to make that stop. Don't make excuses. There's, there was five players that I got past before I got to the goalie. It wasn't his fault. Oh, the D didn't clear the rebounds. Life lesson here. Do not ever expect anybody else to help you in life. Nobody in this lifetime cares about you except for you. So if you're gonna depend on your D to help you out and all this other stuff to be accountable to you and to like your personal performance, just give up hockey. Like start having some accountability and some responsibility. Sorry, I kinda got a little bit off topic, uh, but no Alex, I would not quit hockey. I would go back to the drawing board and ask how I could stop the puck. Sorry, I kinda went off there. Adam Vase, do you tuck your chest protector in your pants, yes or no? Yes and no, technically speaking, because I cut off the ab pad of my chest protector, so it doesn't tuck into my, my pants, so I'm restricted, but it also doesn't hang out like, like I'm being exposed. So I, I'll, I'll put a picture up on the screen so it makes a little more sense. STE Carry, do you have any advice for an older guy starting goal for the first time? It doesn't matter if you're 40 getting into the game for the first time. Enjoy the game, get some gear that you can afford so you're not breaking the bank, because if you hate it, you're gonna hate yourself for spending five grand on a gear that now you gotta try to sell for like two, now you're in the hole for three. Get some friends that you enjoy playing the game with and just try to have fun with the game. This game, everybody wants to focus on it. My, my kid's gonna go to the show, I wanna play in the show. I wanna play in the show, everybody wants to play in the show. I'm three minutes away from MTS Center right now. I would give my life to play one game, one real competitive hockey game at MTS Center, Bell MTS Place, anything if I had that opportunity. Realistically speaking, never gonna happen. I'm probably never even gonna get a sniff at the East Coast, let alone the, the National. Enjoy the game, have some fun, film yourself, right? Film yourself, try to critique yourself. I'm my own worst critic, but I'll tell you, I've made a lot of adjustments and improvements in my game because I watch film all the time. USAF 98, Huskies or Beagles? I pick Huskies. So humang is big, right? This is gonna be the final question of the day. I really like this one. I have a 10 year old daughter that is goalie for U10 Little Caesars. What are some off ice drills that you would recommend to her at her age? Juggling, improve the hand-eye coordination. Stretching, don't force stretching. Everybody wants to force stretching to a full splits tomorrow. Nice and easy. Give your body the time to kind of mellow into things, right? The body doesn't like to be forced to do anything. If I told you right now to go take out the garbage in minus 40, which is what I'm gonna have to do when I go home, you gonna wanna do it? No, I'm probably gonna procrastinate for 20 minutes, then I'm gonna go do it, right? I'm easing myself, preparing myself, telling myself, hey, I'm gonna do it eventually. The garbage is gonna go outside. It's probably gonna have to wait till tomorrow. Right? We have an equation when it comes to success in sports and life. A times B equals C. A is what you control, B is the uncontrollables, C is the result. You can put whatever you want into A, at the end of the day, you do not have a, a you don't have control over what C is gonna be because the variables, the uncontrollables are gonna dictate that. If you're looking to make a jump into hockey and you don't find the results right away, you have to be patient, you have to try, try, try again. I probably would've quit hockey like a month ago if I didn't embrace that mentality. Patience. So include the Q&A. I thank everybody for their questions. If you want a question answered just like this, leave them in the comment section below. I read everything. I will try to reply to everybody. In fact, I'll guarantee I'll reply to everybody. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram and reply to the question poll thing that you can put in your story. I also take questions from there. And uh, we're gonna finish things up with an ad. Cinematography as always. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, sidelineswap.com. I'd like to let everybody know holiday season, uh, right around the time this video is probably popping up, is Christmas Day, Boxing Day, Christmas Eve, something along those lines. Uh, with that in mind, Sideline Swap and I like to give back a little bit. Uh, we're gonna give away three $50 gift cards, three $50 gift cards to buy whatever you want at sidelineswap.com. You wanna buy some sticks, you wanna buy jersey pads, whatever you want, we're gonna give away three of them. I think I'm supposed to tell you to follow Sideline Swap on Instagram. Uh, obviously, you have to have an account. Uh, leave a comment down below. I don't care if you follow me, if you subscribe to me on YouTube. I'd like if you subscribe. I don't really care about the follow too much. Uh, but leave a comment down below. Tell me why you love the videos. Tell me why you want the gift card. Just leave a comment. Tell me something. So, I'm uh, gonna pick a winner from that. Anyway, giving away three gift cards, 50 bucks each. Sideline I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.